This scar is a library of survival, a battle flag of ocean dominance, the resume of a 90-year-old godmother, a family business controlling the seas. This is Orca royalty. Deep beneath the waves, there's a family business older than the Roman Empire, led by grandmothers who've ruled for decades, guarded by sons who never leave home, and fear by every creature in the sea. Meet the Orca, nature's ultimate ocean gangster. These black and white enforcers don't just hunt, they execute military-style heists stealing shark livers with surgeon precision, hijacking salmon from fishermen like aquatic pirates. But here's what's really wild. Their grandma is the godmother. She's seen 90 winters pass. Yes, orcas live that long. In fact, the oldest known orca, Granny, lived to 105. But in orca society, retirement isn't in the family playbook. Because orca grandmas, they hit menopause. Just like humans, one of only a handful of species gifted this rare evolutionary superpower. Think of it as nature's ultimate promotion. Grandmas graduate from breeding to become master strategists. Why? For orcas, it's pure genius. They stop having calves to focus on protecting their legacy, teaching survival secrets no textbook holds. She remembers where the salmon ran 50 years ago. She teaches calves to ambush seals on ice floes. She's the library, the general, the soul of the pod. And her family's survival? It's written in the scars on her fin. But a godmother's wisdom is worthless without muscle. Enter the enforcers, her sons and daughters. Their speciality? Masters of calculated strikes. Off South Africa, they flip Great White's belly up, inducing paralyzing tonic immobility. Then, surgical precision. Extracting only the liver, leaving the carcass like discarded packaging. Ruthless efficiency defines their craft. Their salmon raids, even bolder. Alaskan fishermen haul nets, only for orcas to intercept stripping lines with thief's grace. Over 200 thefts yearly turn fishing trips into involuntary seafood catering services. They've perfected the art of the heist, masters of their domain. But even the ocean's ultimate gangsters aren't without a rival. And for this rival, it's not about food. It's about principle. Enter the humpback whale, the ocean's vigilante. Scientists have documented a phenomenon so bizarre it defies simple explanation. Orcas will hunt larger whales, targeting vulnerable calves. But often, from miles away, humpback whales will detect the attack. They will swim at speed, not to hunt, but to intervene. They arrive with overwhelming force, thrashing massive flukes and fins, creating a barrier of chaos. Their goal is singular to disrupt the hunt and save the calf. It's a deliberate act of interspecies altruism, a calculated rescue mission. The behavior is documented, but the motivation remains one of the ocean's great mysteries, a glimpse into a consciousness we are still striving to understand. It suggests a world of animal morality and ancient codes, where the cry of a calf is a summons to defend. It's a stunning reminder that the ocean's rules are more complex than just predator and prey. But the most surprising conflict emerged not from a whale, but from a traumatized orca named White Gladys. Then came Gibraltar's rudder attacks. After propeller scars marked matriarch White Gladys, her pod learned to disable boats systematically Scientists see trauma-triggered adaptation. Sailors experience aquatic sabotage. 
But before we judge their boat strikes, remember this sacred truth, zero fatalities. In centuries of human orca encounters, not one wild orca has ever killed a person. They've capsized boats, yes, sank them even, but they leave sailors unharmed, drifting in life rafts like guests gently escorted out. Why? We don't know. Perhaps they recognize our kinship, or maybe we're just not on the menu. The chilling truth. These factions operate in siloed worlds. Salmon eaters shun seal hunters. Shark specialists ignore mammal killers. Divided by dialects, diets, and 200,000 years of genetic separation, ocean empires locked in cold war. Now their reign frays. The salmon squad dwindles to 73. Chinook salmon. Their lifeline choke beneath dams. Boat noise drowns sonar communication. Toxins seep into newborn calves. Even White Gladys's campaign reflects an ocean pushed to its breaking point. Yet, for some orcas, humanity's touch proved catastrophic. Captivity. Imagine a marathon runner locked in a closet. That's an orca in a tank. Dorsal fins collapse without ocean currents. A physical scream of despair. Teeth grind to pulp on concrete walls. Lifespans cut in half. Tillicum's tragic story? Three lives taken, not from malice, but from a mind shattered by decades of sensory deprivation. But a revolution is rising. Concrete prisons yield to ocean sanctuaries. Vast coastal havens where retired orcas relearn the language of tides, hunt live fish, and feel moonlight on their fins for the first time in years. No tricks, no shows. Just the sea's ancient whisper, welcome home. Meanwhile, wild clans reclaim their birthright. In Washington state, the El Hua Dam's demolition unleashed a torrent of silver hope. Chinook salmon surging 400-fold upstream, their fins slicing through once silent rivers. Toxins retreat as regulations tighten, PCB levels plummeting 78% since 2005, letting newborn calves nurse cleaner milk. Quiet zones spread where ship lanes hush, restoring sonar clarity for hunting calls. And Talika, the mother who carried grief across an ocean, now guides her new calf through these rewilded waters. Her persistence, mirrored in every breached dam and silenced engine, proves life rebounds when barriers fall. We stand at the confluence of crisis and miracle. Orcas, these black and white sovereigns, mirror our choices back to us, plunder their seas and we starve our own future. Protect their reign and oceans breathe anew. Their survival is no charity. It's ecological algebra. Consider this, where orcas thrive, entire ecosystems flourish. They cull six seals, keeping populations strong. They fertilize waters with nutrient-rich waste. Their migrations stitch together oceans from Arctic ice to tropical reefs. In a living tapestry we barely comprehend. Indigenous wisdom has always known. Orcas aren't just animals, they're ancestors. The Lummi Nation calls them Quel Holmachin, people beneath the waves. When they sing, glaciers remember. When they hunt, currents shift. To lose them isn't extinction, it's amnesia. But watch, and hope ignites. A Norwegian orca pod, absent for decades, returns as herring swarm restored fjords. Talikwa's calf, J-59, now dives beside her, learning ancient salmon paths. And off Patagonia, a lone orca teaches her calf to beach strand hunt, just as her grandmother taught her. 
tradition, outlasting empires. This is your invitation. Become scribes of their saga. When dams fall, cheer. When sanctuaries rise, demand more. When politicians waver, remind them. Orcas vote with their presence. Their song is a compass. If humanity chooses to listen, so let their clicks echo in your bones. Let their breaches shatter apathy. For as long as orcas patrol the deep, wonder survives. And where wonder lives, miracles follow. <laughs>